Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Midday Live on TV3 with me, Martin Esiedu Data. Coming up within the next one hour, this bulletin is reaching you from our studio here at Adesawi. Top of the bulletin today. Chief Executive Officer of Men's Gold arrives from Dubai after months of detention. Ghana Health Service warns of fresh case of dangerous polio type 2 in Tamale in the northern region. Later in the bulletin, Iranian boats tried to impede a British oil tanker near the Gulf before being driven off by a Royal Navy ship. Thank you very much for staying with us. You can also get interactive with us on our various social media platforms and I will happily put your thoughts to the rest of the world. Let's start uh, from the health front because after 10 years of declaring Ghana polio free, the country has detected a fresh case of polio type 2 in the Tamale metropolis in the northern region. The general public is advised to practice personal hygiene methods like regular hand washing and proper sanitary disposal of fecal matter to prevent further spread of the disease. The Ghana National Polio Plus Committee on April 26th this year marked 10 years of the country's polio-free status. This means the polio menace has been reduced to its barest minimum in the country. However, three months after this year's celebration of the achievement, the country has detected the type 2 of the polio virus in an environmental sample in Tamale. At infancy, immunization against the virus is encouraged to protect children against 25 different infectious agents and diseases which leaves babies wheelchair-bound. While there were only 33 cases of wild polio virus reported in 2018, the last mile of eradication is reported to have proven to be the most difficult. Barriers to eradication which must be overcome has been identified as weak health systems, insecurity and mobile and remote populations. As long as a child has polio, all children are at risk, which underscores the need for continued funding and commitment to eradication. The Ghana Health Service and its partners in a statement released on Thursday said investigations has begun to identify possible source of infection and determine the extent of geographical spread of the virus. The statement further called on the general public to practice personal hygiene methods like regular hand washing and proper sanitary disposal of fecal matter to, to prevent further spread of the disease. Other news, the embattled chief executive officer of gold trading firm Men's Gold uh, Ghana Limited, Nana Apia Mensa, popularly known as Nam One, is expected to arrive in Accra any moment from now. And uh, you would recall that he's been in Dubai for several months. The young Ghanaian businessman uh, had been in the custody of Dubai authorities since December last year. He was arrested during his stay in the Emirati nation to collect some hefty amount of money owed uh, his company by a businessman there in Dubai. Namwan is also being sought after by both his thousands of aggrieved clients um, uh, who have their monies locked up with the company since August last year and uh, as well as government of Ghana who is also looking for him to at least help a reason why he seemed to have collected X uh, amount of money from uh, clients. So there are two ch accounts against him. Uh, those cases have been brought against him and uh, his arrival as a businessman 
and CEO of Men's Gold uh, is one of the things that a lot of people have been looking forward to. So let's head to the Kotoka International Airport shortly and then I will speak to our man Selam Amenya who has been covering the arrival of Nam One and um, when we do get him we'll pick his thoughts. So on your screens uh, were shots of, um, you know, his arrival. We'll, we'll be trying to find out the latest, where he is currently, if he's, when he touched down, and then also uh, what has been ongoing since he arrived. We are told that he's currently uh, at the police headquarters here in Accra. And so we, we, our man is on the ground there following him, and we'll pick his thoughts on what has happened since his arrival at the Kotoka International Airport from Dubai. We've been joined in studio by um, a leading member of the Men's Gold Customers. His name is um, Moha, um, Mahmoud Salifu. And uh, clearly, a number of people were looking forward to his arrival. But for those who are customers of Men's Gold, whose monies were locked up, what do they make of the news of his arrival? Uh, Mahmoud, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Uh, good afternoon and uh, good afternoon to all the cherished viewers. Great. Uh, this, is, um, this calls for celebration, no? At least some good news that um, the man we've all been looking forward to, we're told is in the country. How do you take that news? Well, uh, it's a welcoming news after several months of agitation without any headway. Finally, we get to hear that uh, he's arriving in the country. And then, it, 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 I mean, we're happy in a way. Uh, but we have to be cautiously optimistic. And again, let me add that um, his arrival, one of the reasons why his arrival uh, uh, is, is uh, good news to us is that um, Several people have, lo have lost um, li their livelihood as right. a result of their investment that got locked up. And so their children got out of school. Some have been, you know, um, you know ejected from their homes. Right. Um, some cannot even f provide uh, f food for their families. So his arrival tends to give us some hope. But I can s let me say that this is just the beginning of a thousand miles mm. because... It, I mean, we, we, just as you were saying a while ago, that he's been uh, to the police headquarters. Well, our concern mainly is how he's going to uh, Give get, you back your get money. us our money. That is the most important thing. So whether prosecution or, or, or I or mean, not, some, you or not, not we, that. That, that really is not our, our, our main focus. Our main focus is how he's going to, he should come out with a payment plan, sit with the leadership of the customer base. Let's find a way of, I mean, let's put a payment schedule. Let's see how, you know, he's going to pay us within a short. How many, how many people constitute your membership? Well, we have, um, uh, our membership uh, consists of over 9,000 uh, people. And over 9,000 so, 9, people. That is what those who have registered with the Coalition of Aggrieved Customers of Men's Gold. Right. But we have other members who do not know about the existence of this group. Okay. So for that reason, they are not part, or those who don't uh, want to be part of it. So at this point, Namwan should come with a payment plan, sit with the customer base, let's see how he's going to pay us within a short period do you, of time. Do you believe... To take out you are calling for cautious optimism. Yeah. Like you need to be very careful yeah. in your expectations. Yeah. Yeah. But what is it that do you do you have the faith that he'll be able to pay everybody? Well, um, if uh, I, we, if, it, if the government wants Namwan to be able to pay all of us, there there will be a way because earlier we've made this point severally that uh, before the company was closed down, the the government needed to secure all Namwan's assets, including bank accounts, such that as soon as the company was closed, uh, those funds would have been used. And at, at that point, we thought there could have been enough to be able to settle all, all customers. But uh, at this point, we're hearing that he's won some judgments and then he's going to bring down some money. He mm. has some assets that have been frozen by Yoko. If all these are put together, and some time ago, the Honorable Kennedy Japan MP for Asin Central told us that there were some accounts that several millions of dollars were in. So if all <laughs> these are brought together, and if truly, all right. uh, I mean, all these are brought together, I think we all could be settled. Right. That's what we are looking for Let's go to, to, and nothing else. Hold on a second for me. Let's speak to our reporter who's been following um, Nana Piamensa since he arrived at um, the Kotoka International Airport. Salam, I mean, good afternoon and thank you for your time. 
Good afternoon, Martin. We are told that Nam One, as it's popularly called, is currently at the police headquarters. Can you confirm that? And what was it like when he arrived at the airport right through to the police headquarters? Well, um, the flight that he came in, which is the Emirates, landed around 10.45 a.m. And uh, when they landed and they started disembarkment, uh, he was bundled and put in vehicles. Initially, they had wanted to use the VIP lounge, but we had a change of mind. And uh, there were four vehicles, some design patrols, and then a Navara pickup. They never had their sirens on, neither did they have their, <coughs> their emergency lights on either. So they, they used a, 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 a gate that is around the cabin uh, section of the airport. If you know, they were the directly opposite the aviation social center. That was where they came out to drive through the street back and then brought into the CID headquarters. He's been sent to the Financial Forensic Unit of the Ghana Police Service. And uh, his lawyer, that is Kwame Kufu, also just came in. Some of the, the people he used to work with are also here. And uh, the man who broke the news on social media, Kwame Eplas himself, too, is here. So uh, you found a few people gathered talking. But uh, I think some other people have been stopped from coming into the CID headquarters. So currently, that is what is happening here, Matt. Right. You said he was bundled um, from the airport. Can you clarify? Was it like they heckled him, handcuffed him, and threw him in a car, or it was more like a gentle coercion into the it, car? It, 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 it was gentle. Because they use a, a tunnel, you cannot tell whether he was uh, brought in by Interpol or he came himself. Hmm. But uh, when he came out of the tunnel, they tried covering his face. And then they put him in the, uh, the, the vehicle that I, I spoke about. So, so it meant that the police were waiting for him to arrive, and then when he arrived, they just walked him into the car? Yes. Don't forget, the police have a warrant uh, of arrest, arrest. waiting. Right. Did you see any group of persons, probably support, uh, um, customers of Men's Gold, at the airport or at the police headquarters? No. No, no Martin. There are no Martin, such crowds? Yes. Right. No. And um, has his lawyer said anything or has he himself said anything yet? No, no. He was sent straight to the FFU unit. That is the uh, financial and forensic unit. He was sent straight to that place. And uh, his lawyer came in a while ago. That is Kwame Ekufu. Right. So they've not spoken to the media at all. Okay. Salam, thank you very much uh, for this quick update. Salam Amenya is a man who's been following uh, this story. So it is that... Um, Nam one or Nana Apia Mensa, the CEO of Men's Gold, um, has arrived in the country from Dubai after st spending a few months there. He was sent straight to the police headquarters, the CID uh, office of the police headquarters, and um, certainly his lawyer has just been has also arrived as confirmed by our reporter. We'll see what happens out of you know his arrival and subsequent interrogations, and then how he's going to be paying off the customer. Thank you very much for staying with us. Let's do business now. And uh, we're starting from uh, what the Vice President has said. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has directed the Prime Secretariat to, within four weeks, digitize its operations to avert diversion and smuggling of the commodity. He was speaking at the 2019 Ghana International Petroleum Conference in Accra. Mr. Johnny Blagoji. The Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Baumia, expressed concern about the diversion and smuggling of premise fuel which has become a disincentive, a reason for which efforts should be made to address the problem. He recommended the use of technology to digitize operations at the various landing bit sites across the country. We've decided that the best way to deal with this is to digitize the process so that we can be able to attack uh, or direct the subsidy to each boat that is registered. And we've registered all the boats. And we've given everybody, the whole team, four weeks to come finalize. He gave a hint to a new master plan to address challenges in the petroleum sector. It will be presented to cabinet next to, for consideration for the commencement of the first phase of a new pipeline of infrastructure projects to complement existing infrastructure and thereby ease the movement of petroleum products from Tema through Akosombo to Debre, Bupe, and Bolga up north. 
The Deputy Minister of Energy, Dr. Amin Adam, noted the digital initiatives and investments will protect the interests of consumers. Ministry of Energy is therefore working with the National Security Secretariat to implement an energy security policy aimed at protecting critical infrastructure and the sustainability of the petroleum industry. The Chief Executive Office of National Petroleum Authority, NPA, recounted losses to the tune of $200 million through diversion and smuggling of petroleum products. These nefarious activities of the petroleum service providers and some that are not even service providers led to the country losing a colossal $200 million per annum of tax revenue compromising on product quality at filling stations due to laundering, which leads to damage of vehicle engines and distortion of the national consumption statistics. The theme for the conference was regional collaboration, a catalyst for transformation. On to some other stories. Some are concerned members of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association have petitioned um, the association to, as a matter of agency, stop deducting monies from um, their accounts or risk losing them as members of the association. They claim the association over the period have been deducting huge amounts of monies from their accounts monthly, a development they want halted. And I would be speaking shortly to uh, a leading member of the group to find out really what, whether or not these concerns have been raised with the leadership of the uh, of, of the association and and whether or not they've had any responses regarding that and we've been joined in studio by samuel pierre lacera i hope i got the pronunciation yeah, P -P there. P -P uh he's a leading member of the concerned nurses who say that some huge amounts have are being deducted from their um, from their salaries good afternoon and thank you for joining us how good afternoon when did this start, these deductions you're talking about, when did it start? Um, according to the history about the association, it started in um, 1960. What? 1960. 1960. Yeah, that is when the, uh, the deduction started. But when we, we were in the service, which was um, 2016, then the association did not preview, educate any of us about whether to join any association. Then our back salary, five-month salary started, and we saw that the, the association deducted on, on our arrears. Then I, we, we approached the, the members, those executives, what is the problem? And they were telling us that since you are a nurse and you are, uh, you are uh, registered, licensed practice nurse, and you come out as a, as a nurse and working at any various, various agencies, uh, you automatic member. Then I said no. As a profession, profession as it is, mm. being a professional as it is, and uh, um, comprised of nurses, they understand consent. Right. What is meant by consent? So why don't they seek the consent whether a nurse will join or not to join? Mm. And furthermore, so, so it's like an automatic addition, whether you like it or not. Yeah. And and that is the problem we want to correct. And two, they are claiming that. Uh, um, the, the, there's a nurses fund which is 50 cities and I can bet you I have the access pension on my uh, app on my phone you check and they will tell you that there is no set up beneficiary for the fund so the question is who is the beneficiary to the fund in case I'm not there mm. and there are a lot more nurses who are not in the system who have passed away and mm. their relatives don't know that they have they are, they are contributing to the fund. have you raised these concerns with the leadership of the uh, ghana registered nurses and midwives association and if you have what was the response you got from them the the response is old song they will not mind you because they think that uh, they always used to say that they hold the bargaining power but holding a bargaining power does not gives you the right to deduct someone unnecessary for example last month me they deducted nurses to the extent that nurses were running at a negative net and these are registered nurses yes it, they were they, it, it was negative net up to 1004 negative and you are telling us that you 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 are fighting for the welfare of a nurse then you are deducting the person negative 1004 300 for the month of may june it is there it is due to this 
and already we petition them that we don't want to join the association mm. and we want to i want to make this one clear to the general public that um the trade union allows different trade unions so they always use it that since you are a nurse and uh, you don't have any we have other trade unions for example the uni um, upnmg that is a um, uh, union for professional nurses and midwife ghana we have namji so they should allow at least they should treat that fundamental human right of a nurse okay we do protect uh, patient our patient uh, care uh, right but here is the case uh, uh, we being a nurse we don't respect the association is not respecting the but is it compulsory to be a member of the association it is not compulsory by the um, association definition how the association defines uh, a, association member. Is yeah, a member yeah a member it says that you have to fill a form okay and being a filling a form then that you hold you become a card holder signed by the president and the general secretary right. then you pay dues as prescribed by the association okay and you are saying you have not filled any such we form. have not consent to any but you filled the form and we have members. not filled any form too so you've been forced to be members and yes. the deductions are taken yes please and the deductions are even more than Epsnet. Taking 20 cities for building levy, um, 50 cities for nurses fund, which we don't have beneficiary to it, and the dues. It is 2% of basic salary, meaning I'm paying 34 Ghana cities. Then someone is paying, uh, so in all, the maximum um, uh, deduction is 120. You being a senior nurse, you pay 120 a month. Wow. Okay, we are actually working the lines to speak to Perpetua Uforiam Pofu. She is um, a, a leading member of the, she actually the General Secretary of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association to find out what truth there is in this and then really why they have been deducting members according to this um, story, why they've been deducting the members all this while and they are saying that even those deductions, they do not get to see what it's being used for. But in the meantime, you are threatening that if they do not stop the deductions, you are not going to be members of the association. Is that it? N not that. Already we've, we've written a letter to them that we don't want to belong to the association. There are other unions we, do, we want to join. So they should allow that. We sh they should allow us to. Ah, exercise. But your nurses, you should allow yourself to join registered nurses. No, there are other union. Like what? Like Union um, Namji. And, what is a Namji? Um, that is a National Midwifery Association and okay. the Union Professional Nurses and Midwifery. You prefer to join those ones? Uh, they should allow us to exercise that right. That's all. Okay, right. And or what? Or I mean, we. They don't allow you to join, or they force you to join the Ghana Register. Already, they force us to join yes. the association. So, if they don't allow you to join those ones, then then what? We, then we take them. Advise we, 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 we we advise ourselves, and we take them to wherever we uh, the law the law the law will speak for us. Okay, we are we are unable to get perpetual at the moment, but um, what what? Okay, I'm told that we've been joined by um, perpetual Ofori Ampofu. Uh, good afternoon, madam, and thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Right. To start with, is it compulsory for every nurse to be a member of the Ghana Registered uh, Nurses and Midwives Association? It is not compulsory. The point is that you have a right as an individual to belong to a trade union or a professional association. Right. Which is captured in the Labor Act very clearly. Okay. And it's your responsibility to ensure that you belong to one such that your interests will be protected as a worker. Okay. But, uh, Madam, we have a member of the concerned nurses here who say that they have been automatically added to the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association and there are some reduction, deductions from their salary that they are unable to understand. Has this concern come to your attention? I'm glad that I know because um, we hear a lot of things. We hear a lot of things. If some information comes to us formally, some also informally. And if there are some illegal deductions, I, I want to understand exactly what they are saying. What, what 
I, I, I'm not even getting it clear. You're not getting it clear? You mean you're not getting standard. their consent clear? We have three standard deductions that we make from every member's salary. Okay. That's your association dues. We have, which is 2% of your salary. We have building levy, which is 20 cities. And we have nurses fund, which is 50 cities. Nurses fund is like um, a tier three um, voluntary fund that is, uh, has been instituted for the members such that when you retire, whatever mm. you have contributed plus returns is given to you. Now, the building levy is also okay. um, a levy that has been levied on every member. Yeah, but, but madam, if you're saying that it is not compulsory for them to join and they have automatically been added and these deduct deductions are taking place, is that not an illegality that the association is perpetrating? No, you see, we are professionals. We are professional nurses and midwives. And it is important that as a professional, you belong to your professional association. So nurses and midwives need to belong to their professional association. But you've not given and them the... registered nurses okay. and midwives association, whom the collective bargaining certificate for nurses and midwives. We must right. We negotiate on their behalf. All and right. To tell um, me the fact. When somebody we would we'll have to leave it here for now. Um, no, let, uh, let me make this point, please. Perpetual Ofori Ampofo. Uh, we would have let to leave it here for now. Point. She's the General Secretary of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association. Certainly, in our subsequent bulletins, we will bring you an update of this. But thank you very much. Also, uh, Samuel Pugh last year. Um, he's a member of the Consent Nurses Association. Stay with us. We'll be back with more on Midday Live. Let's go to some other stories now. And um, you would recall that uh, uh, investigative journalist Anas Arumaya Anas released his latest expose, which had to do with an orphanage where some children were being maltreated. And uh, we've been joined via Skype by the president of the Association of Social Workers to find out what they make of uh, the, the report by Anas, and we are also told that they are expressing surprise that something like this is still ongoing in an orphanage here in Ghana. So let's go straight to uh, the Skype now. Dr. Kwejo Dia is the president of the Association of Social Workers. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Why are you surprised that this is happening? Um, have, have you been doing enough checks and balances to make sure that something like this does not happen? Uh, we are surprised because uh, when children are on the streets, because of, for some reasons, they are not in the custody of their parent or guardian, and somebody or any person decide to open his doors to help them, uh, to make them develop their potential. Hmm. We expect that such a person will help the children to develop their potential. Hmm. But if that place turned out to be a uh, a home for more treatment, then why would I have thought that you, you, you should have left them on the street for God to take care of them? Right. Ah, nah. so, in, 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 so in the latest case where Anas you know, came out with this expose, what is your association doing about it? And what plans do you intend putting in place going forward to all the other orphanages? Um, we, we have, as you can read from our uh, press statement, we are asking the Ministry of Soci uh, Gender and Social Protection to uh, investigate the operations of the home because for now we don't have the mandate to, uh, as a situation, to uh, do anything as far as the home is concerned. But we, our interest is uh, to get the Social Work Council bill so that the council will take care of such issues and uh, bring about some sanity and mm. standard in right. the home facility. Okay. Thank you very much. For lack of time, we'd have to leave it here for now. But Dr. Kwejo Dia is president of the Association of Social Workers. And uh, their concerns follow the expose by Anas Are Mayao Anas. Time now for entertainment news. In entertainment news this afternoon, an injunction has been placed on upcoming musical national executive elections. The uh, current Greater Accra Regional President of the Association, Ras Levit, is praying the court to order the election committee to, quote, compile a fresh and valid credible voters register to guarantee a fair and transparent result. For the second time in months, 
the National Elections Committee of Musica has postponed its general election. In a statement signed by Chairman of the Elections Committee, Smart Inkansa, the decision was to permit the Electoral Commission of Ghana, overseers of the elections, to complete its limited registration exercise. The Musica elections were originally scheduled for June 26 nationwide, but were postponed to July 10. Chairman of the Elections Committee has indicated that the election will come off on Wednesday, July 17. But it is still uncertain whether or not the election will come off on the new date. However, some candidates seem not to be pleased with the turn of events and are questioning the credibility of the voters' register that has been published. An aspiring musical president, Raz Caleb Apia Levy is praying the court to order the election committee to compile afresh a valid and credible voters' register to guarantee a fair and transparent election. That's it for entertainment. And on the international front, an Iranian boat tried to impede a British oil tanker near the Gulf before being driven off by a Royal Navy. Details of that story is on our website, 3news.com. My name is Martin Esiodidati. Thank you very much for watching. Do have a good afternoon as always. Stay positive. Bye for now.